Good evening and welcome to the Acton, Maine Selectman's meeting for October 14th. It's uh, 6 o'clock. Um, let's salute the flag first. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, we'll move on to the town administrator's weekly update. All right, just a short list for you um, as our office is swimming in taxes and absentee ballots. So far, we have over 600 people that have voted absentee in Acton. Um, so, I commend my staff for all the hard work and extra hours trying to keep those going in and out as uh, quickly as possible um, and same with taxes as you know they're due tomorrow uh, first thing is just wanted to let you know that um, we got the district 2 road commissioner uh, set up to the extent that he got sworn in I had a meet with um, the liaison he also met with um, the deputy sheriff covering Acton Shapley the fire chief code enforcement I think that one of the last people he had to meet with was uh, the district 1 road commissioner I'm not sure if that's happened yet but that was on his list and uh, I went for pre-screen drug testing, uh, was done today. Um, the former uh, road commissioner's spouse uh, did come in today and gave me the last of the keys and radios and so forth, so we'll start getting that um, swapped over the next couple of days. Uh, remember, we scheduled the um, meet and greet for tomorrow. Um, I did put the post after your approval that I'm hoping to have it set up similar to how you are here with the addition of one more person. Assuming all three of you, you know, are coming, it's not necessary, but it would, it would be nice. Um, and add him up there and more have a, a single file line because we still have to keep the COVID and all that in mind. So we're not going to put refreshments or anything out. Uh, you know, less touching is better. And we've kind of advertised that if you have anything more than a couple of minutes, then we put his cell phone and his uh, email out there. So, but that's scheduled for tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Uh, we've finally figured out what's going on with the generator. <laughs> It, it, it is good until I tell you what it was so apparently and I look at David because he's been the one that's been helping me kind of deal with it um, the test has been set to every other week so those off weeks I kept telling you it's not running it's because apparently it was set to test every other week which isn't how I remember that happening I didn't think so either so anyways it's mm -hmm. back to one week Cheryl's got an alarm set for uh, 10 11 o'clock on Wednesdays knock on wood so far it's running so uh, pandemic policy I'm going to put off for next week. We've got a couple of changes that have come up. Um, just a reminder that the RFP for the loan fire truck, for RFP for the loan for the fire truck is out until the 28th. Uh, that's when you approved last week. The treasurer has sent it out to surrounding banks, and we're advertising it as we as we normally would. Uh, two things that came in from Saco River, just to be aware of. Uh, the first one is that um, they've received an application. I think this is in your packet um, from. Michaela Wheeland at uh, Zero Raccoon Road. It says oh, map 103, lot 26 for a garage. So they want you to review that application. Um, and actually, they sent two different um, one notice and then a different envelope, uh, a notice of intent. So it's actually the same one. So that's just FYI, and it's posted in the hallway. Been dealing with um, Attorney Warren in regards to the, the deeds. I'm not sure if I told you this, but. Um, we know that the, the deeds were inadvertently filed from the Martell Estates giving us that land. Um, even though it's not a legal deed because we didn't accept it, we do have to sign deeds to, to give it back uh, or to at least have a paper trail in the record at the registry. So those will be signed by you guys. Uh, the board is, uh, not the board, the attorney is reviewing it before he okays you know, your signature. So that should be coming next week and that piece will be done. The um, individual that has done the tree lighting the last X amount of years um, has decided for personal reasons not to do it this year. Um, so I was hoping to reach out to the rec committee. I know we just awarded, uh, we just added a new rec committee member and she's anxious to do some things. I don't know if maybe between them and Mary Grant, uh, what they're doing the pumpkin carving, maybe we can come up with some, you know, COVID safe process to still do something um, for the tree lighting. So we'll reach out to them. Who's the rec liaison? 
Okay. All right. So we'll see. Kim, I'll send some emails and CC you in them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and the last thing is more just, a, I mean, not really town related, but, you know, we do do it on town time as well with your permission. So I'd like to update you. Um, as you know, uh, we've been fundraising for uh, the Richards, Dean and Randy Richards. We wrapped that up on Saturday um, and raised over $20,000. Wow. So that was um, a huge success. Um, the sad piece of that is we went from the Richards to the Roba Shows. Uh, you may know um, the Roba Shows, they live over on H Road. Their uh, son is Cal, right? He works. Cal Boyle. Cal is the, mm -hmm. on the fire department. Uh, Jana was on the wreck for many, many years. She ran it. Um, and I know that they were, she would be the, the aunt of the deceased baby that we had, mm -hmm. right? So family's had a lot of a lot of things going on, but he's got um, stage four brain cancer and is out of work. Um, so we're asking everybody to round up for the Robo Shows for the next few weeks and see what we can do to support them in any way. That's all I have for tonight. Um, I know we all signed the warrants and bills. Yep. Um, so uh, I guess I need an approval of the agenda. Make a motion when we approve the agenda. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? All right, let's see here. Units are not ready due to the holiday. Yep. So we're going to um, skip the minutes of the last meeting. Um, do we have any department heads or committee chair updates? I'm aware of. Okay. Um, old business, um, a citizen's petition. Uh, just an update on that. I did send, um, I said, sent an email to the individual um, that circulated it and let him know that you guys took a vote to put it on the op next open town meeting. I uh, didn't hear back, but I did send that out. I also sent uh, me municipal an email regarding um, the question of, you know, who decides if a signature is stale? You know, how does COVID play into that? And if the board has voted to um, put it in the next in the next open town meeting. Can a notary still be called? So as of now, I don't have a uh, an answer, but I just want to let you know that was done. Okay. Um, B abatement. So last week um, we uh, tabled a couple of the abatements because you had the the very good question of if you're removing a building, why does the uh, land value change? And you have an email in your packet from Dennis that says. Um, the value difference is due to the removal of the site improvements from the land value. We've had an improved property and we add value for the well septic driveway and landscaping to be done. This is done by adding a value to the land for site improvements. Once the buildings are removed, we also remove value that may have been tied in for site improvements to the land. Two of the properties had buildings with improvements, the other parcels were just a barn lot, no site improvements. Please let me know if you have any questions. So that's why the land value changed for your assessor. So do we have to make a... It's your turn. It's my turn to make a motion? No. <clears throat> Is that what we're... Under old business, do it that way? I don't... You know, yeah. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Sure. Okay. These are the two, uh, like Jennifer said, from last week, so... Mm -hmm. um, Mattel Estates... Mattel Estates on the lake. The land value went from 48250 48, to 30250 Building value was wiped off because the building was taken down. So we, the Acton Board of Assessors, have approved a tax abatement for $113,747 in value and $1,370.65 in tax dollars on real estate. That is on that one. The next one is, well, it's a separate person, but I guess we can probably do it, same situation. Sandra J. Mattel. Um, 47750 on land, 29750 uh, is what it dropped to, and the same type of thing. So it was adjusted. We, the Acton Board of Assessors, have approved a tax abatement for $67,659 in value and $815.29 in tax dollars of real estate. So I'll make a motion we approve the two abatements, one for estates, for Mattel Estates on the Lake, and the other one for Sandra J. Mattel. 
I'll second that. I moved and seconded. All approve. All opposed. Okay. to new business um, a Doyle mooring request mr. And mrs. Doyle come on up <laughs> Can you try to talk in the mic a little bit just to make sure we get picked up? This is about uh, the issues at Wilson Lake. We have this this summer along. Talking about the uh, common lot. Pardon? The issue on the common lot that we had a couple of years ago with regards to that. The common lot. The common, common lot. lot. Oh, you talking about the right of way? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. We're one down from the um, right away, and with that. Everybody uses the right of way to take off their boat. Lately, there's been three boats in that area, and all of a sudden they decided to move them so they could have a beach. The right of way is 50 feet, the ramp takes up 15 feet, and the rest they're using as a beach. The people that don't have a lot of property. Okay. So, with that, the bigger boats. Board in front of our property. We're lot 22. We have 50 feet of waterfront property. The next one is 21, which abuts the right away. And he's basically he has to go to a minefield to get his boats out and in. And what they did is took the boats. They were under 100 feet for the state mandate for mooring that close to shore. They're too close to the shore. They're in front of our property. We can't get to the raft without going through. The footage is like 90 feet between boats. From one morning to the end of the prop. They got their props up all the time. People are gonna get hurt. They refuse to move their boats. They don't want to move their boats because they can walk out, unhook, come the morning, bring it in, then go out and enjoy themselves. And the issues we have, they're obstructing us from getting in, they're obstructing us from getting out. They do not own waterfront property. And the state mandates you have 50 foot waterfront property, you're allowed one morning. These people live up and back, and I'm not saying anything about the backwaters or anything else, because we're all here to enjoy ourselves, but they flat, flat and refuse to move further out. And our mandate is, if we can get the town of Acton to implement a mooring an ordinance. An ordinance. And the board, so the, as you guys are aware, the, cause I sat down and met with them, the board um, has heard from other property owners in the past um, with similar air issues, not necessarily in this area. And Inland Fisheries, the Deputy Warden, and Code Enforcement um, have all said the same thing, that without some sort of um, ordinance in place, they can't enforce it. And there's, there's no question that they don't have the rights to have the boats there, but they don't have any authority unless the town has a local ordinance. So, um, Well, I think we... We just, this is the same thing we were discussing last time. This is it the same, same area? 
I think so. Is, is this on the in, the little inlet where the public boat launch is? Yes, but we have one on our road, yes. And no, it's over the other side. Ed, it's when you come off Peck Road on Peacock. I was going to say. Where okay. Of dirt. Okay. Is it beside an A-frame? Yes. Yes. Hall's property? Yes. Who? Hall? It's not Hall anymore. Okay. Yeah. I okay. Mean, he, when he, uh, comes, he comes out in the morning, he has his children there. Yeah. He says, I didn't realize I had a marina. Mm. And that's how bad it is. Yeah, that's all shallow. It's shallow. Shallow water over there. And there has been some incidences that they could have been, the children could have been hurt. But there's a the, yeah. So what are the, is it the people on the front are letting them use the property? No. No. Oh, they just, they're, they're just simply it. going out and putting the mooring they're in and. They're taking it. They're dropping moorings okay. wherever they want. How many okay. moorings they have? I'm sorry? How many moorings do they have? There's four of them right now, but. You got four boats and that. Yeah. Pool. We know that there's more coming because we were talking to one of the neighbors down, look further down, and she said, oh, I can kind of wait my father. Is leaving this to me, you know. I'm planning on having the jets you know, out here next year for my kids. So it's just one right after another. And you say they <clears throat> do they have rights to the uh, the launch? No, no. They they the back lot is they they, they I mean they, there's not even any tax on that. I mean, but does it is. go with their back lot? <clears throat> to the back lot are they the people on the back lot? Is that? front lot that's on the lake is that for them to get out and use well, they have a, it's, right away. Right it's away. a right away deeded yeah. right away okay so it is a yeah. deeded right away yeah. all right mm -hmm. but if they mandate to the state I'm, we spent a couple months looking through the state brochure mm -hmm. you that's fine now. yep i highlighted a lot of them and we'll ask we'll answer your questions okay okay thank you thank you appreciate it there's, there's a map and also this uh, other incident in the town in, in Maine has four people away from their property by taking them to court. And there's this, um, there's a superior court judge. The lady ruled, the judge ruled in her favor. So it was a gentleman move, move, uh, putting a lot in front of her property. And then he put a second mooring in front of her property and was renting that out. So she finally took him to court and she went to the superior court to the rules that he doesn't own waterfront property. And that's what it's all going me down to. So we got 50 feet, so we got one mooring, we got one boat, and we got a pier. Where? And we're not obstructing anybody. And we're just <coughs> two boats. So the so, so they kind of mourn right in front of your your land. Right okay. Front. So you you talk to the state, you know, um, inland fisheries, and they said they can do anything. For it. Okay. Who owns that dock there? Me. That's yours. Okay. <laughs> and then that's your next door neighbor, I assume. Um, that's that, on the other side. The A frame is over here. Okay. And that's where the right of way is. Okay. As you can see, this one here. <laughs> This boat here. This is where the A-frame is. Okay. And he can't back out. And he's supposed to be able yep. to have clear passage. Is what I'm just saying. Okay. Go ahead, sorry. I just, I, we're getting two different conversations. Sorry. Here. Well, I was going to say that it, it, when, when this issue came up a while ago, a couple of years ago, uh, it was a probably two and a half years ago so um my concern i was road commissioner at the time i just happened to skip it on the meeting and, and i was giving my point of view on it and uh the concern that i had when it all came up was that you know that's state-owned water and that for inland fisheries or the warden you talk to a warden or inland fisheries uh, a fishing game officer. okay I would suggest you go to their higher ups because that's state water, and if they have a mandate saying 50 feet one more, and then that can be enforced. But um, oh, we have nobody here on inland fish, fisheries would enforce there, that. Yeah, and talk to the enforcement officer, and he said, "You really can't do anything," and that's why we're here tonight. But inland fisheries. fisheries 
They not didn't the they warden. Say, didn't they they, they, they're they're they the said ones, David. Maybe, I can, maybe I can get through a conference call with them. They're the ones that told us that even though they are their waters, because what you're right. saying is completely accurate, that it's a, it's up to the local officials to enforce. Enforce. And they won't. Right. And so, from a local level, they won't do it without an ordinance. But um, that they have it could be something as simple as is an ordinance limiting moorings to property owners. Right. Really, I mean, it could be something very simple, I would think. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of thought that's what it was, anyways, because like they're saying, you know, you have 50 feet one more, and right. if you, and, you know, I mean, if you have right away to that lot, which they all do, means theoretically each one of those back lots would have a mooring, correct? No, probably only one. Oh, one. Only one for that one. For that one. one. Okay, that would make sense. Yeah. It goes in detail about that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they call it a way right away. Who, whose dock is this? Uh, that's, I think that's ours. That's your dock? The two yes. Right and those two boats right there are not yours? And they're more. Yeah. Those are the back waters. Those are the ones that. And then your raft, <laughs> your raft is beyond that. They're in between they're, your land yeah. and your raft. They're more. I see that. And if, yeah. we, if we get in our boat, we can't go back. The A-frame is 50 feet, we're 50 feet, mm -hmm. and the way they set their boats up, they get, there's 20 foot boats, but with the swing, they got mm -hmm. 40 feet, mm -hmm. and they got 10 feet between them. So that leaves us five feet. We have to square with the A-frame, so we're down to two and a half feet. Mm -hmm. It's not good, yep. and it's getting worse. So what are you proposing? We would like the town of Dawkins to implement Boring ordinance, you you could have what they call uh, the hollow master, but even though it's on the way, that's what the church room has. If he can come down, he can set up the moorings. He can set up a mooring field, and the state mandates between 100 and 200 feet. They can put their boats there, but they flat and refuse to move their boats so so close to shore. So we had talked about that ordinances have to be voted on by the by the townspeople. By the town. mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next, so at this point, the next town meeting isn't scheduled until June. Right. Um, but I think that I mean we take the time to review the packet and give it some consideration. Yeah. Um, I would think, I'd yeah. like to. I, I myself, we I mean we just had a petition come in here to put something forward to town meeting. Right. And I don't want to make this any more difficult for you guys, but I think it would hold more water. If you guys did a similar thing, you know. Settle it with. No, 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 no. no, no. Similar. Uh, similar. Similar. Oh, it's this thing here. <laughs> it's, yeah. the, it's going back at Yeah, it. so what, it, what I said was we just had a petition brought to us to put something towards town meeting to vote on, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to continue when people want to do that, to have them do the same thing. You know, um, what, what this individual did was a, um, a petition, mm -hmm. okay, and um, for what, you, what you're looking to have done. That way there, it kind of gives us more, um, you know, we, we don't want to go into something that there's no support for, you know. Support I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm not arguing that at all. I just, I just think that my, what, what I've always wor worried about was, you know, say one person comes in and made a complaint, we want to change an ordinance, and, you know, you want to see a following, you know, and uh, um, I would suggest, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely, I, I would consider doing what you're doing, I just I think a petition would be a good idea. The citizens, do they, the citizens, citizens petition. petition. Yes. Do they citizens come and get petition. the paperwork from you, John? Well, there's no paperwork, but okay. you and I I can know. certainly, we can talk about it. If you let me okay. get through taxes this week, sure. reach out to me sometime, one day next week, give me a call, we'll set up an appointment and I'll walk you through what exactly they're talking about and what it would look like. And we can I, go think, from there. I think what that does is it will also bring up <clears throat> you know, more input of what's going on and we'll get a better feeling of what we can do because uh, we don't want to put to uh, put a, a warrant out there that, I mean, an article out there on the warrant that's going to, you know, some people would be for and some people are going to be against. We want to get as most people you can to you vote for right. it. And uh, if you go with the mooring ordinance, the yeah. state allows a fee to be collected by the town, and it's a twenty-five dollar fee. <coughs> and that would be to the in the ordinance. So with that. 
you could hire somebody part time for the summer because you got. Well, that's that's the other reason why I would rather see a petition for the simple reason is if we're going to start having to spend extra taxpayers' money to to police this, then I want to see that there's enough people out there that want this mm -hmm. before I put that on there. We, we also spoke to the president of the Lake Association, yep. mm -hmm. and she's been inundated with complaints. Yep. Yep. Okay. And so it should make it very easy for yeah, the Yeah, so this should be easy to get your signatures. She can't put her own self at risk. Not, that's not her mandate as the president of the association. Yep. She just can take and listen to the people and, and put a letter up, and that's her. Mm -hmm. that's and this is actually good timing for you because when we sit down next week and talk about um, how petitions work and some of the different legal ways that you can get petitions, you do have a November election coming up where you're legally allowed to collect signatures there if it's something you choose to do. So um, give me a call next week. Let me get some taxes. And then we'll sit down next week and go over it. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming in. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Uh, <laughs> you did a good job. You, uh, can, you can stay or, or leave. You're, it's your choice. That's all my stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's, I think uh, we're going to skip B. Yeah, Mr. Mowry is I not don't here. See. He'd asked to be put on the agenda, and I don't see him, so we'll okay. skip that. So we'll go to C. We'll open the truck bids. Yep. Are you guys okay with me just doing it from here? Yep, that's fine. Cheryl, you want to write down some numbers so we can remind them to the, read them out loud? How many bids you get? I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. So this was for the truck. The minimum bid was 5000 Yep. All right, the first one is Streeter and Son, $5,600. Dalton Richardson, $6,275. Acton Excavators, $5,370. I thought it was from O'Reilly. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Ooh. Sean McLeod, $8,666.66. Oh, he wrote sorry for the scrap paper. <laughs> Apple Valley, Ken Smith, $7,800. Isaiah Knox, $6,876.52. So I think so. I, so we have so definitely the eight thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars and sixty-six cents is the highest, right, Cheryl? Yep. Yeah. So we had fifty-six. No, fifty-three seventy. I need the best. Um, so fifty-three seventy in order. We had fifty-six hundred. We had <coughs> sixty-two seventy-five next. Sixty-eight seventy-six fifty-two. 7800 and Mr. Sean McLeod for $8,666.66. What are your wishes? Well, I'm going to make a motion that we approve, we, we uh, go with Sean McLeod's bid at $8,666.66. I second that. Way too many sixes in that, but okay. <laughs> Assuming the, the bill of sale can be signed and payment received within five business days. Yep. Sounds good. All right. I second that. It was then. Yep. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? All right. I'll be in touch if that doesn't the work. Truck out. sold. Good. All right. Um we're gonna do 
Are we going to do public comments before yeah. we go into executive session? Is that all right with, with you guys? I know you have to go sure. somewhere. Yeah. That's fine. So do we have any public comments before we go into executive session? Hey, Dennis. Good evening, Madam Chair. Dennis Long. Uh, I spoke a few weeks ago about uh, disrespect that was uh, towards people that came up to the microphone. And last week uh, was a perfect example of what I'm talking about. But I do have to compliment the chair uh, for her trying to uh, keep order. Uh, I know it, it's very hard to do, uh, but it was very concerning um, to me, anyway, uh, what was said uh, to the person that had the petition last week, Jeff Donahue. I, I thought that was uh, get out of control. He got pushed uh, pretty hard uh, where he lost his temper. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, I would uh, excuse me. I'm talking to this chair, uh, and that, that's my point. You know, normal procedures running a meeting is when you get up and talk. That's who you do address as the chair, right? And everything goes through the chair. Uh, that's just normal procedures for any boy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I appreciate you trying to do what you tried to do, Kim. And I don't know if there needs to be a boardsmanship workshop that you need to hold or, or something to um, make the board look a little more uh, professional, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is just what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Every week, Dennis. All right. Every week. It did get out. It did get out of control. Uh, it did get out of control last week, and I, I you know. Um, and I don't get up and say something every week. See, this is once again, Mr. Winchell lying. Yeah, lying. Out misrepresenting stuff. Yep. Uh, really, not knowing what he's talking about most time when he opens. Yep. Yep. Uh, but that's the way it is. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, I, I thought you had a, my last email. Sorry, real quick. I'm oh. sorry, Mike. Um, I had you on the 21st, the last email that I got. But we'll sneak in. I'm going to sneak in tonight. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Let me just, we're going to, as soon as we come out of the executive session, we'll go to you. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, she's not public comment. She's not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Wong, by Grinder. And I'm bringing up uh, an issue about the D6. It originally was brought to the town selectmen meeting for your minutes on December 4th, 2008. Can, uh, I, can I ask you just to start over because I'm trying to take notes with her and I didn't hear what you said. You're bringing up the... He's bringing up the town D6. Oh, okay. I just yeah, didn't hear it. It was brought D6. up originally on 12-4-2018 in which Mr. Walsh brought it up and uh, is, to go over quickly, I'm not going to read all of it, minutes. But about bringing it down possibly to the uh, Fair, fairgrounds. Fairgrounds, yeah. Fairgrounds, yeah. Then it was brought up on 717, 724, 731, 87, and 814, at which time you tabled it. Uh, it was 14 months from today. Uh, I guess my question is, is what's the status? It is the town... What's the town plan on doing with it? Uh, you know, are we going to bring it back to the town? Is it going to go to I the? I thought we had wa we had wanted I, to take it to the to the I'd, fairgrounds. I'd still like to get it down to the fairgrounds and right, make so a display out of it. Since it was right. yeah. it was mentioned, yeah. uh, we just don't have a fair this year. Yeah, last we year we didn't yeah, have didn't enough time it. to get it under cover and stuff. Yeah, we probably ought to think about for a town meeting to see about that's a finding out what it would cost to build a. You know, just just a a roof, yeah. basically, right. with some removable sides. Right. Was my right. thought, I'll and get it down there. Bid. So, huh? Put it out the bid. 
Now, we don't want to get it's rid an of old it. Piece of the value of it right now, according to what my little bit of research, I'm not an expert, but with just, with just a dozer blade on, it's between 45 and 8,000. Maybe, yeah. Uh, and, and you get the yeah. V. Yeah, the double wings and the winch is going to bring it up more. Yeah, that's yeah. the winch. It's more of it's more of a huh? special the winch. The winch was in the fire when when the okay, ship well, was burned. That was my information. But so, yeah, yeah, it's more of a special interest piece, I think, to the town. You know, it's the only piece of right. plowing history that we have. Right. Yeah. It'd you know, be nice so to I, see I it. I watching it. Yeah. In '69 and '70 when Bob Me was on it for. Yeah, Weeks and I think it would be a perfect addition. I actually talked to the people at the fair, and they yeah, thought that that would Robert be. A, was, was talking about putting it down there. I mean, yeah, they thought it'd be a good idea. We yeah. just need to have a cover to put over it. We have so. a cover to put over it. Huh? We have a cover to put over it. No, yeah. like a no, I mean like a, a roof. building, We're like a roof. a roof over it. But we um, we talked about moving it out of where it is now, which I want to let everybody know because it's funny how this just comes up that. Back there in prior select, selectmen up here wrote up a contract with my father to do a free storage lease so if anybody wanted to go see it they could. Yeah. And so now um, the same individual that helped do the contract has a problem where it is. So um, let's not let's I not even go there. I'm not, I'm not so that's not, not no. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you were sitting at home thinking of about the town D6. So what I what I propose is um, right now we can get it under cover for the meantime, other than where it is right now. Um, put it back in the town shed. Put it back in the town shed. Is the town shed leaking though? Is it, wasn't that one of the I'll reasons? It probably is not enough spot. to... Well, that was just one of the reasons, you know, a few years yeah. ago when it was brought up. So that's, yeah. what, you know. So uh, uh, myself, I, I have spoken to my father about it um, because certain individuals seem to think it's a big deal. So I would like to make it not a big deal anymore. Okay. And um, as soon as we can get it fired up, sure. which it needs some fuel filters, which I will go purchase. Um, I'm at Caterpillar usually once a week. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to get rid of this problem so we can go sit somewhere else for a while, then they, we don't have to worry about it. That'll be a good idea. Yep. And oh. by the way, it was not any individual talking to me. I am going through all the selectmen meeting for other reasons. I don't know. It catch my eye. Okay. So I just want you to know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we can start working on the fairground thing yeah. now, whether it's. Yep. You know, to start getting something built. Yep. So we'll be ready for next year. Good. All right. Um, all right. So uh, I need a motion. Was that it? Oh, no other public comment. Oh, any other public comment? Sorry. Oops. Okay. So I make a motion. We go into executive session. Uh, personnel issue 405 6A 1 at 644. Just say you'd second. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Oh, they left their pictures here.
people that they actually put forward and was on the ground. It didn't cost us a penny in, in the end. The only trouble is the Slapman at the time wouldn't listen to the two road commissioners and said that was an old stump dump. So you have to go down at least 15 feet to get rid of soil. And they didn't. And that's why I had a sack. Because people like me, for many years, when the, when the sand piles outside, you get those big chunks. You know, they used to just spray it with calcium. And those big chunks, what are you going to do with them? You push them out into the swamp, push them out into the swamp, push them, you know what I mean? So that's how that area got so big that it was just from sand that was frozen, we couldn't use it. Yeah, that was a nice building. I just, I wish it was back home because it's all in the middle of the world and it's all in the middle of the world. Well, it's stupid the way it got. I mean, if we... That was a gimmick. By the road commissions and make some money. If we could push it out, that would be those like those continental trees on that and all that. Not much, but... That's what I mean. Just jokes in the back. It wasn't too bad in the back. You know the, the cement pad that um, next door neighbors got? Yeah. I think part of that's on town property. That's okay. Thank you. I think so. It wasn't too bad because a lot of things happened. There were more than three left over. And you pull in on two trucks to load at the same time. If I load on San Juan Road 7 and San Juan, I get back and turn around and try to walk and drive them around. That's why I get down a little bit of four stops. No, it is what it is. No, it is. I mean, it is what it is. No, it's it's like we're still going to be stuck with it now, bro. Yes. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, too, well, you know, like I was thinking about the money you saying last week, that, you know, you know, I was talking about, you know, for 10 years, just about 10 years, actually, the, 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 there's been a conversation about changing over to the West system. And it saves 30% of your salts. Uh, even if you use straight salts, you, you save 30% of your salts. And in, in a sense, and this is what I mean about the conversation, when I said last week, you were just having a conversation. If they adjusted the style so that it was worth your while to put this system on your job. About my pile. What's left on the agenda? So we need a motion to come out of executive session. I will make a motion. We come out of executive session. Personnel issue 4056A-1 at 6:54. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? All right, and a, des a decision has been reached. I'm going to make a motion that we uh, uh, raise the town administrator's assistance hourly rate from 15 to $16 an hour. From 15 to $16 an hour? I'll second it. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? All righty. Okay. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Yep, thank you. Nav I've got to run. Okay. So I've got we'll another, we'll another meeting. i got to head for Zoom on. Okay. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you, everybody. And Madam Chair, with your permission, <laughs> um, we have a, in, in a little bit of miscommunication, but we're human, so we, that's okay. So I apologize for making you wait. But um, she is from York County Soil and Water, and we had our, our weeks mixed up on when she was going to come and speak with you. So if you don't mind allowing her a few minutes. Sounds good. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't no, no, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so I think this has been brought before you guys before, but the district has recently been um, awarded a grant to help protect the watershed um, of Square Pond. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that we're hoping to do through this grant is address some sites on town roads in Acton. Um, and we are looking to see if the town will support um, our efforts with this and generally like 
the grant provides a 60-40 cost share, so the grant would be able to provide the funds for engineering and materials, um, and we would um, are looking for the town support to help do the actual install of these things. Um, the specific sites, and I have them here. I think they've been sent to you before, but I have another mm -hmm. copy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a while. They did have a representative It's been a few out. years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then, okay. Yeah, so my predecessor started this, um, yes. and then the grant has actually been awarded, or it has been conditionally awarded. It will officially start up in 2021 and run through 2022. It's a two-year grant um, through the DEP and the EPA. Um, and here I can give you guys these Great, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So for the town of Acton, there are other sites we're looking for at the grant, um, but I'll focus on the Acton ones for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, there are five sites, four on Willow Street and one on H Road, most of which deal with undersized culverts. Um, and looking to replace those and resize them <coughs> and improve them. Um, there's some ditch work involved as well. Um, and yeah, there's a <coughs> slightly more in-depth description here, which also kind of lays out what we anticipate the uh, costs to be just initially. Um, yeah, and I think this had been brought to you guys before, but you were unable to vote on it due to the pandemic um, timing in the spring. Um, so basically, I just wanted to check back in to see if this is something <coughs> that town is willing okay. and financially able to support these <coughs> sites. Um, I think probably what the best thing to do is, I mean, H Road and Willow, those are both your roads, right, Will? Yeah. Um, That's what I was going to say. Talk about the, the, uh, the total cost. Um, I don't know who made up those numbers, but it must be somewhere close, I guess. Um, he gets an amount so much a year. Okay. Um, if these were something that you could fit in your budget and you can work with these, uh, he would, I, I'm for it, obviously. You know, um, I think you would want to work with our road commissioner there and try to figure out <clears throat> the project themselves, what he thinks it's going to cost. And whether or not this is something that you know he wants to do, then he can come to us, and you know because I'm I'm all for it. And he's he he can run it through his budget. Obviously, if it was a big big project so where it was going to go outside his um, his budget, yeah. then that's when we would get involved. But right now, he does have a budget that could cover most of these. Okay. At this time, I don't know what he's spending his budget on. You don't right. let him know. <laughs> what time frame did you say? So this. When would, right. What time frame would you want the work done so we can think budgetary numbers? Yeah, it could be split between 2021 and 2022. Okay, so that gives them some time. Yeah, there are two years, and yeah, we have the rest of this year as well to you know work on planning. And do you have um, a business card with you that we yes. can? We'll leave with with um, this is Will Langley. You want to come up for a minute, Will? Will is our district one road commissioner on that side of town. Well, this looks like all of his side. Um, so I've given him that, and he can look at it. If you give him your card, then. Um, you guys can um, discuss it like David said together and then Will can come back and report back to us and, and okay. um, but it sounds like you'd have selectman support but we certainly need his support right Great. his roads you don't want to spend his money for him <laughs> no. right but us. if he can uh, you know save some money that would be good that's not I mean for, you know. for 18,000 the grant is 60 percent yeah I added up his his portion would only be 18,000 so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's about 18,600 total yep. um, nice yeah. Well, thank you for coming in and talking with us. Yeah, we appreciate it. No problem. So communicate directly with Will, and he'll come to us and let us know what we need to do. All right. Article 43. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Open oh, sand bids. Sorry. For some reason, I brought my problem tax folder out. I do want that, Cheryl. We got one sanded. Hmm. One. Thank you. Just one. And I did have asked Cheryl to pull the 19 numbers because I thought it was odd that we only got one. But so last year um, it was awarded to Landscapers Depot at nine dollars and forty-five cents, and uh, Landscapers Depot is the one company that bid this year. Um, I just can attest that we 
ran it in the Smart Shop, uh, not Smart Shop, we ran it in the Waterbury Reporter, put it online, cable, Facebook, everywhere. We also mailed it to Alan White, Mike Carroll, Monarch, Quick Creek, Landscapers Depot, Pepin, Dayton Sand and Gravel. Uh, we reviewed the list with the road commissioner to see if he had any additions. Um, so this is what we got back. Last year was nine forty-five. This year has gone up to ten dollars and five cents. And that's the only one we get in. This so is who this is who we used last year. This is who we used last year. Yep. Any comments? Any, yeah, Will. <laughs> I did let the other road commission know that you normally don't make a decision the first night and he'd have a chance to look at it. Yep. But that was before I knew I was only getting one. So are you going to have look at that? Or you yeah, I, was, I mean, I would like to. I think out of courtesy, that's the right thing to do. But did you have any concerns with them last year? No, Tom gave us the trucks we the material and we needed more at one time. He said, call him and he'll give it to us. So. And what do we think about the 55, what, a 60 cents increase? Is that just cost it's, of living? Going rate for a screen stands between ten I mean, and twelve dollars a yard. So last year, um, Monarch was at ten, and Carol was at eleven eighty eight. So okay. it's still, so, you know what I mean, so as low as the well, second that's lowest. What, that's what most people buy it for when they go pick it up. Mm -hmm. So you're getting it delivered for less than what you normally buy it picked up. So it's it's still a good deal, okay. as long as it, as long as they're fine with the material. Yeah, they're just good, they're just good let me have him just take a peek at it for under courtesy and then we'll put it on the agenda to, to approve Sweet. this one assuming there's no questions. Uh, Sound good? You, you got it mailed out to I'm, we have a list here of everyone that it was mailed to. Yeah. We always keep a paper trail. Cheryl mailed them out herself. All right. And Hello. I know it ran the smart, sh the, I keep saying that. What the other one? The Waterboro <laughs> Reporter, because when they bill us, they cut it out and send us, send us the, you know where it ran and attach it so it definitely ran i have no concerns about the process i i, I think when, when i heard there was only one um uh, you know the, what i come to a conclusion because you know i work with all these companies that the problem is it's so busy right now i i think probably what it is is they probably not that they didn't want to but they probably just didn't have the time so uh, right. but he's busy yeah till next week next week yeah. thanks well all right so we're on f article 43. yep so uh, this is just an fyi no action needed tonight this is uh, an application that came in from hawk road um it is a new application it's following the new procedure there was an invoice in there it was, a, it was less than two thousand dollars when i looked at it briefly um I did, uh, 1744. Um, I did send it to the committee. The road committee chair did reach out to me to, to schedule a meeting date. I haven't had a chance to go back to her, but um, she was here. That date will work, but I'll send her an email. Um, so we'll let them have their meeting, make the recommendation, and I'll put it on the agenda. Following after that, I feel like the email was um, the, uh, the date was the 24th, but don't quote me. Yeah, I did. They did give me a call. That road did give me a call asking some questions and some that. And mm -hmm. I believe he should be all set. Yep, so we just have to go through the process and make yep. sure that, um, try to find Leslie's email real quick. Oh, here we go. Uh, October 26th at 6 o'clock, they'd like to meet, and that's a Monday night. and So that will be fine. So we'll give them the okay, and then it'll be on your agenda for the Wednesday after. Okay. Is it okay? Sounds good. 6 p.m. All right. We have any announcements? <laughs> any no. announcements? Anybody? Well, we the meet and greet. Pumpkin carvings coming up. They're doing the drive-through. The meet and greet at the school. Uh, meet and greet. Uh, no, at the Mary Grant. Oh, okay. I know they put some flyers out there, so you can check okay. the um, the meet and greet tomorrow. We talked about meet and greet taxes. Okay. What time is that again? Which Six. one? Oh. Greet. Huh? Meet and greet. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Um, I can't think of anything else. I'm sure there's plenty of that. Anybody else? Well, then I guess we'll... Uh, Make a motion to join the meeting. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All opposed? Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. Jeff,